welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you, Miss Alice Minsu Chun. She'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Miss Alice Minsu Chan, CEO of Solite Design. You're here with us tonight. Very nice to have you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's wonderful because we love having ladies who do great things come on the program and really share with everyone what you're doing. So before we even tackle about So Light Design, let's talk about you. Who is Miss Alice? Let's get a little bit of a deep dive on yourself. Uh, I was a professor at Columbia University. I was teaching architecture and material technology. I also taught architecture at University of Pennsylvania and Parsons the New School. Um, as a material technology uh, professor, the trend in materials is that everything's getting thinner and lighter and faster. Mm -hmm. And I invented a small solar light that flat packs and pops open into a beautiful cube called the Solar Puff. Mm -hmm. I was teaching at Columbia University when the Haiti earthquake happened, and I quickly turned my studio around to be an innovation studio to help Haiti. That's amazing. That's amazing. And we realized um, in our research that Haiti was only 5% electrified and most uh, of the population was using kerosene for lighting at night. And it was basically realizing that Haiti was a microcosm of what was happening globally. Globally, there's 2.6 billion people without access to electricity and they're using kerosene at night. It kills um, millions of children every year because of the toxins and the fumes. Um, in South Africa alone, there's 200,000 house fires and burns that occur every year. Um, I'm also a mother and when my son was born with asthma in 2004, I would be going to the doctor's office mm -hmm. almost every week and I looked up and there were so many kids with asthma in the room. And you know there's a saying that a worried mom does better research than the FBI? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I did my research and one out of four children in New York have asthma and it's 40% higher than the rest of the country. Basically because pollution in the air, 75% of the pollution comes from buildings mm -hmm. and energy consumption. and uh, when I was a kid, this wasn't happening with the health of our, our kids. And I also realized that it's too early in our gene pool to be changing this rapidly. So it has to be because of the environment. And that's why I started to focus on solar energy. And early on, because of my research with material technology, I was sewing solar panels to fabric and thin mm -hmm. film substrates early on. And when the Haiti earthquake happened, I shared all of this research with my students and the first prototype of our solar lights came about from, from my lab. That is amazing. So tell us about that experience. You know, you had all of these prototypes. You started working on this before the earthquake. So this yes. is something that you've babied and, and nurtured and then the earthquake, you know, happened, and you decided, you know what, I can actually kind of test this out, go full throttle with this. Yeah, I, I actually, after so many natural disasters happening more frequently at, at um, terrible consequences mm -hmm. and catastrophic, actually, I realized that I couldn't stand by anymore. I had to do something because the risk of doing nothing was greater than the risk of being wrong. And so um, I went to my dean and said, look, we need to do something. I want to change my studio around and share all of my solar 
research with my students and um, make it a research studio so that we can create innovative solutions to help Haiti. But what we realized is that, you know, one small thing like a solar light can actually make a huge impact and also save lives. Mm -hmm. Now there are other solar lights out there, but they're all ABS plastic. They were hard and very um, non-recyclable uh, in regions where people are living in extreme poverty they usually end up burning the trash and burning plastic is even more toxic than the fumes of the kerosene really? so it was important that we use non-toxic materials and recyclable materials me being a materials uh, specialist that definitely did help <laughs> and uh, I, I did a lot of research and actually our material is sailcloth material and it is recyclable and basically this is our new product it's called the Quinn I named it after my son because he's the light of my life and it flat packs it has two huge very big solar panels and it opens up into a, nice pump. a very um, large lamp and you can hang it there's magnets and you can sit it on the table like this mm -hmm. or like this to um, illuminate light. And basically our patent is for the assembly of the combination of the solar panel, the circuit, and the expandable bladder. That is really, I'm just looking at that's in awe because it's really, when you think about something like this so small and how it's compact and yet you could have this anywhere and really utilize this for so many things. Well, we, I like to consider this individualized infrastructure. So this also has a phone charger. So there's a USB and a micro USB, so you can charge your phone. So anywhere you go, whether you're in New York or you're in Nigeria, a phone is a lifeline. And when I was in Nigeria, people had three phones even when they're living on a few dollars a day because one's always charging. And the phone is so important because now um, there's so many things that are happening with moving money around through, mm -hmm. te through texting and, um, and just communication is so critical for survival. Absolutely, and when we come back, I definitely want to kind of dive in a little bit about your travels and all that good stuff because you have been to quite a, many few places been to a lot you've covered and you've seen a lot of third world countries that could benefit from this and for the diaspora here i think we could it's a great message to let everyone here know how we can get involved how we could help that would be I wonderful all that would be great but of course we just also want to announce that starting in april beyond focus will also be airing twice a week that's right we'll be on on tuesdays and thursdays on the same channels that you're watching us on right now at 9 30 p.m all right so catch us twice a week we've had a great response a lot of people have been wanting to see us so your request has been answered twice a week. Beyond Focus will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9.30 p.m. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. So, Miss Alice, why don't you tell us a little bit about your travels? Because that's something I love to travel. I love going around the world. Um, but you travel with a purpose. And I'm not Absolutely. saying that my travels aren't with a purpose, but they're more for leisure. But you actually go there with a purpose that is so useful for the people. So, it started with Haiti. You went there. And how did the people in Haiti actually receive this? Were they receptive? Well, we partnered with an orphanage in Haiti, and we were 
able to raise enough money to give um, 700 lights to the orphanage and they were the children there the actually they were all girls and there were about 20 girls in in this particular orphanage and what they did was they ended up um, selling the solar puffs to the local community mm -hmm. so that everyone could have free free light solar light um, Ideally, we'd like to create economic opportunity in regions such as Haiti, where we would give the first 10 lights to a woman in a village, and then she would sell those, make a profit, come back, buy more, and then distribute as well as create an income. Because we believe mm -hmm. that to really change the world, you really need to create jobs. And yes. I saw a lot of aid coming in and kind of dropping things off and then leaving and, and then not It's a short-term solution. Exactly. And what really needs to happen is economic opportunity so that you can buy your own food, buy your own clothes for your children, buy your, you know, the education for your kids. And you don't have to choose what kind of house you know, you can actually choose what kind of house right. you, you have live in versus more stability and freedom. Um, so when the people and and this is not just exclusive to Haiti, everywhere that you travel to, when they look at that, how are they? Because a lot of people are still living off of, like you said, kerosene lamps. So um, after the Nepal earthquake, we did we we actually did a Kickstarter and we ra we raised about. Um, half a million dollars in 30 days and part of our campaign incorporated giving light to Nepal after the earthquake and we had volunteers that took the lights afterwards to Nepal and they went into the mountains and the hillsides with Sherpas and getting to the villages up at the top of the the hillside they act we have footage of them um, dancing and singing all mm -hmm. night with the light. In regions such as Haiti, when I first did my field testing, I remember this one woman who was a farmer in the central plateau, and she had a very raspy voice. Um, and I asked her what it meant to her to get this the, our solar puff light, the, the cube that popped open. And she said that it was a gift from God, and they the women started singing and dancing afterwards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she said that she couldn't afford to buy the glass that went around her kerosene light. And so she had five kids at home in a one, one room house. And when they're doing their homework, they're coughing and um, wheezing because of the smoke. And she was so, so grateful mm -hmm. and it kind of it changed my life really at that's when I felt so like simple I could be a, a social entrepreneur was was that was one of the moments that really hit home that we could really make a huge impact and a difference in people's lives and actually save lives so I've been to and I also went to Nigeria to one of the most um it's called Makoko in Lagos, Nigeria. It's a floating slum. Oh, wow. And it was, it's actually not mapped by the city of Lagos because um, it's really a settlement. And all the homes are on pylons and everyone's on boats to get there, little um, boats of, that are carved out of a piece of tree. Um, and I was fascinated because, you know, when you see these commercials, Save the Children, mm -hmm. and you see all the children crying and starving, I was amazed because everywhere I went, whether it was Haiti or Nigeria, the kids were always laughing. They would have the, you know, the uh. bellies and everything, but they were all smiling and laughing and having fun. And I was just so inspired by the children Absolutely. everywhere I went and they made the most amazing toys out of out of bottle caps and 
plastic bottles and there was this one little boy that made this little kite and it was made out of a garbage bag and twigs and it was flying in the air and it was so They're cool. Innovative. They they it get their so innovation cool. in. And um but anyway, um most recently we've been going to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Yep. There were, you know, millions of people without power and hundreds of thousands of families in Puerto Rico that lived for several months without power because the grid mm -hmm. was so old and they couldn't fix it. It took very, very long time to get it back up and running. And still, even last Christmas, I went to Puerto Rico just a few months ago. There were still families without water and power there. Um, but again, every time we we go, it's amazing because they're s just the families and the children are are so absolutely their faces light up. They start crying or they they just have a lot of joy. And um, I'll tell you a story. Um, Mary Julian Cruz is the mayor of, of San Juan, and she was sleeping on the floor for four nights. She was. Um, no shower for like a week. And one of our NGO partners, Operation Blessings, knocks on the door. This is right after Hurricane Maria. And our guy says, you know, he, we're here to help. And she says, why are you here to help? And he said, because God sent us. It's a Christian organization. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, geez, now God's involved? And then she said, well, if you really want to help, we need flashlights. And he said, this is something better than a flashlight. And he whips out our solar puff light and she starts crying. And she takes the first 3,000 solar puffs to the poorest region of San Juan and La Perla, mm -hmm. which has gang violence, drug wars, um, shootings, and there's no traffic going in and out of La Perla and the rest of the city. Hold that thought. I want to finish up the story. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. And don't forget, Beyond Focus will be on now Tuesdays and Thursdays starting at April 930. Same channels. So don't forget to tune in. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. So, Alice, right before the break, you're telling us about an old San Juan, mm -hmm. you know, in a totally gangbang ridden <laughs> area. Yeah. It's dark and desolate. Yes. And there are these beautiful little puffs of yours that yes. come out. So, um, Mayor Julian Cruz brought these lights and started lighting up the, the street, lighting up the city. And she's, she's, started calling our light the cube of hope and the word spread and they the people on the street started calling her the mayor of light <sighs> and then what happened next was amazing they there was no more gang violence there was peace between these two mm -hmm. areas and there was traffic going in and out and civility it was um, I think that's the most beautiful part. So how does that make you feel as a CEO, as the boss lady, as the brainchild behind this? You know, sometimes when we create something, we you always think it's, you know, you hope that things go as far and as big as they could go. But for something like this to see that your invention not only is helping people in countries that could benefit, but you're also, you know, violence would halt and certain things would just be at a pause. How does that make you feel? Um, I feel really grateful that I've been able to facilitate or in small way help with that because it's not just 
me, but it's actually a collective of everyone working together to create change that I think is the most powerful part, that this is a small little light and a small invention, but for some reason, because of the design, it really makes people happy when they see it because mm -hmm. it's a beautiful design. And it's it, fun and it's, yeah. it's very, very light. You can see that. And um, it's actually on exhibit at MoMA um, in the Modern Museum of Art in the product design gallery right now. I think it's the only solar light that's been in the Modern Museum of Art. Um, but in any case, what I, what I like to think is that um, that it's just one small way that we can create change and that if everyone does one small thing together that becomes something massive, much larger than ourselves and we Absolutely. can create change. Absolutely, that's amazing. How do people get in contact with you? Ultimately, what is your long-term goal? Are you, are you looking to have partners or people team up? Um, well, today I'm, I'm dressed like this because I, I came from an investor meeting. We're raising capital right now for our company so that we can grow and scale. We're, we want to do geographic expansion into India and do distribution in India. Um, but basically, just come to our website, mm -hmm. uh, solite-design.com, and we have a number of products that are great for camping and outdoors, but also our 10% of our retail sales go to our nonprofit. And um, we have many NGO partners that uh, are helping whenever there's a disaster like Operation Blessings and Hispanic Federation who've been really in influential in helping mm -hmm. Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Absolutely. What about partners in terms of the team? Yes, you are the CEO, but we know that nobody operates alone. Is there anyone that you want to shed some light on or just kind of talk about the structure and the team? Well, um, we've been building this company since 2015 and I have a partner her name's Stacy Kelly she's the COO and I'm the CEO and we basically have a team of um, very very small team and we've been kind of bootstrapping the whole time we're a startup company and it's been difficult but we you know have a vision for creating change and uh, making a difference so that's good that's really good do you think your background in education and research has definitely helped with this journey absolutely absolutely a lot of my experience with material technology and sustainability um, and that knowledge has fueled all of the work that we've done and we want to do other things as well larger solar uh, systems for the home as well as solar charging stations and basically it it's not going to stop here it's going to continue awesome is there any final words anything that you want the viewers to take away from you here today well um the sun is the most powerful source of energy that comes to the earth every day. But we believe that the light of your imagination and your hearts are more powerful than the sun. And if we use that light together, we can create change. Absolutely, that's amazing. Um, I love it, I think there's a lot in store, you know. Crazy to think that 2019 is blowing by so fast. We're already in motion for 2020, you know, and I'm excited to see what you guys are going to be coming out with. Um, any big trips coming up? Well, um, I don't, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a good it, question. It's, it's, it's always nice to be able to travel, but sometimes a lot of the groundwork gets done here, too. Absolutely. And we're working hard every day, and um, 
please come visit us at solightdesign.com and um Help us the email address if they have um any emails they'd like to send you you can reach me at alice at solight-design.com absolutely but i think it's going to be great we have a very strong haitian community so i know they appreciate the fact that you went to Haiti multiple times. We were saying that offline, that you've been there several times. You actually speak a little Creole, which is nice. Um, and, and just kind of maybe share with us, you know, briefly, uh, something memorable from Haiti from when you were over there. Well, the first time I went there, one of the first times I went there, I met the president of Haiti, um, Martelli, President Martelli. And I met um, President Clinton there. Um, there was a Green Tech Expo, and our product was in the um, exhibition. And I thought to myself, um, you know, there was sand going everywhere and dirt, and it was windy, and it was like 110 degrees. And in, in walks the president of Haiti and President Clinton. And I'm thinking, these guys could be on a beach somewhere. He, you know, President Clinton's very old now. <laughs> um, and I thought, he doesn't have to be doing this, but he was there and doing whatever he could mm -hmm. to help. And same thing with Puerto Rico. He was doing that as well. Yeah. Things um, that they don't show on the news all the time. And... I thought, I, I was just amazed at the Haitians and their ambition and ingenuity and um, passion. I just, uh, all the, and I thought that all the children that we met were so beautiful and so smart and innovative, and creative. Um, it, was an, it was just a wonderful experience. I, I like that, and we'll definitely um, keep people involved and send them to your website because I think it's a great product, and, you know, solar energy is great. So thank you for joining us thank here today. Thank you very, so much oh, for having me. I love it. We'll definitely be in touch, and I'd love to have you back and get more information and oh, get some updates. Wonderful. Awesome. I'd love to. Thank you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back again next week. Same time, same place. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. And don't forget, new time starting on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have Beyond Focus twice a week now, okay? Every Tuesday, every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. Don't go anywhere. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you. We really look forward to hearing.